Nestled in the Connecticut River Valley of Western Massachusetts is the small city of Northampton, founded 350 years ago in 1654. Though unique, it faces many of the same challenges other communities do across the nation. I'm going to ask you to stand and raise your right hand so we can swing. Recently, we launched a documentary film project to explore its character through the life stories of people who make it what it is today. Oh, what a fancy. Up here. Hey, too small up here. Hi, Harry, how are you? How's the design? Good. One of those is Kim Howes, a lifelong resident who, in addition to his work as an engineer, has served the community in many ways. They said, where is your pin? And I said, oh, I forgot it's on my pajamas. <laughs> so you know what I did? <laughs> you put it on your pajamas. At the annual meeting, you came in your I pajamas. I wore my pajamas with my pin on. You did? You did? <laughs> yes. Oh, that's great. <laughs> you got to have a little mirth in life. You, you do. You do. <laughs> and also wanted to uh, thank once again uh, the exceptional work of the campaign cabinet. Just a great, great group of people. Kim Howes. Um, Kim and I go way back and uh, appreciated uh, your guidance uh, for me and for all of us on the campaign too, Kim. Thank you. Here doesn't have three or four bulbs. <laughs> Good to see you, Kim. Nice to see you. How are you? There's a sense of history, and I've always been interested in history from a family aspect as well as having grown up here in Florence. I called you to get permission to use your house. You can walk down the street and know people. They aren't faceless people. You can establish a rapport with folks, and uh, it's satisfying when you can see the mark that you have left on the community. Oh, Jimmy, yeah! I'm yelling at you. I know you are. Yeah. <laughs> Tonight I'd like to introduce one of my favorite people, one of uh, Florence's favorite sons, Kim House. Are you all members of the Florence Association? <laughs> If you're not, you can leave. <laughs> this is a rather nostalgic event because these images, which you're going to see here tonight, describe an important part of our history, not only in this country, but right here where we live. I had heard about the Howes brothers and their photos, uh, you know, especially in Florence, for years. And I knew that they were, you know, Kim Howes's relatives, but it was so exciting to see Kim presenting it. Ice cream. Ice cream, soda water. <laughs> Ham sandwiches. <laughs> Don't forget Moxie. The meat wagon and the water wagon. Stop and shop. <laughs> You'll notice how raw the, the countryside looked. They cleared the land and built houses and developed. And some of us can remember when the ice wagon came by and we'd run out and get a sliver of ice to suck on in warm weather. Boy, oh boy, am I that old? <laughs> My earliest memory was as a baby being held in my mother's lap on the porch on North Maple Street and uh, my mother singing to me. The 
this is the home I grew up in. And down the street is the center of Florence. And I used to walk back and forth down the street, going to school. Everywhere you went, you walked. We were the North Maple Street gang, and there was the Lake Street gang. The whole society tended to be self-governing. At 9.30 at night, all the kids had to be off the street, and the clock in Cosmian Hall Tower would ring, three rings, three chimes, and that meant the children should be at home, 9.30 at night. In going through some of the old artifacts and things like that, I came upon this old album of photographs. Had never seen it before. As I opened the first page was this picture of my great-grandfather, George, and his wife, Mary, and their five sons and two daughters. Taller than Aunt Lizzie. <laughs> That's a and great... Aunt Filey was the warm, loving one. She and was. And Aunt Lizzie was the sort of a proper one who was trying to teach us good manners and stuff. Um, she was a pain in the butt. <laughs> <laughs> the family residence, as it was, and as I remember it, in summertime, warmer weather, we were up there all the time, set up on a little knob. Usually we went in through this side door, out in back was a spring, and from that spring was a pipe that led water constantly flowing into the kitchen all year round. Do you remember those Thanksgiving dinners? Yeah, they had long, long tables set up this in the well. kitchen and the dining room. 70 people there, maybe? A lot of people, anyway. A lot of people. The table seemed to go on forever. And the men would gather off to the side, and you got a clue that maybe they were telling a little joke here or there. There was nothing ribald, but they had fun. The most important thing was respect and dignity, and it's something that has been passed down through the years, I think, through the family. This is my grandfather, grandmother, and their three little children up in Ashfield. They'd gone up there from Florence. My grandfather had a great sense of humor. He had a twinkle in his eye. He taught me how to play cribbage. I'll never forget the first game that, I, that he taught me to play. He took cribbage very seriously. And I beat him. The oldest, my grandfather, Walter, and George. Those were the three photographers. That little farm that they had just wouldn't support all five sons, so they had to go out on the road, staying in rooming houses, primarily in towns up and down the Connecticut River Valley. They knocked on doors, three for a dollar. You want to have your picture taken? And you know what? There were a lot of takers because most people had never had their pictures taken. These photographs show people in all walks of life. The old Yankees, new people are just coming into this country people standing in front of their homes, people holding their babies, proud of their achievement. Those were the people who built this country. My mom and dad loved each other very much. They uh, had quite a romance. And those were difficult times because the Great Depression set in. And the Depression was tough. 
my grandfather's residence and barns and trucks, and it all went down the tube. And I remember the day of the auction, when everything got auctioned off at a pittance. I was sick at heart because there was a place where we had played and it was, we were familiar. My grandfather worked, my dad worked, and it all went right down the tube. And it wasn't just us, it was most everyone, it was everywhere. People have no idea the gravity and the depths of that depression. Jack and Peg. Peg, nice to meet you. In early October, we brought my brother's ashes from Houston up here to Florence to place them in the family plot along with the remains of his father and his mother, his grandfather and his grandmother, so that they could be together. If your name is Ann, you can sit down. <laughs> <laughs> we can weep and we can smile, we can pat each other on the back, because we all share the love for this fine man. Lord have mercy on his soul. We honor his soul and his memory. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. That's what it's all about in life, I think, is to take a few moments and to open our hearts in front of others. While he's with us now with his teasing, infectious humor, love and loyalty, showing us how to be strong and survive. Life hasn't ended for him or for us, it's just changed. My mother died when I was 12. And uh, that was quite a trauma. I was at Boy Scout camp, and I knew something was wrong. She had an operation, and my, my dad came up to get me. Came home and said that my mother had died. And I just can't describe the agony. I didn't know what to do. He was in tears, my sister was in tears, the whole family was in tears. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy God and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou the table before me in the presence of my Fortunately for me, a lot of people stepped in to provide the continuing caring and love and affection to fill the gap. Thank you, Paul. I love you. My dad and I were very close. We fished a great deal together. On my birthday, I could choose wherever we wanted to go fishing. <laughs> We'd get up and have breakfast. We would get up to the uh, place, little place where we'd pull off the road. And, uh, well, I'm going to go up the stream. Why don't you go down the stream? We didn't fish hand in hand or close to each other. And then we'd get back after lunch. And, well, how did you do? Yes. <laughs> I knew I was coming of age when I used to be able to match him. My dad was well known and well liked in town. He was a real hometown boy. He was uh, president of Kiwanis and he was superintendent of public works. He was a real patriot, the one who fought in World War I. He always led the parade here in Florence. And I remember him speaking at the high school on Memorial Day about the need for peace and understanding. He loved freedom. 
the ability to express himself and to share thoughts with other people and come up with a resolve. That's about the most important thing in his life and as a matter of fact, it's the most important thing in my life. The respect for people and uh, what we hold so dear. It shows the order, the bands, the like various... Especially color-coded. Yeah. Kim had been part of the parade committee right from the beginning. Hi, buddy. Hi, buddy. Not Hi, just buddy. the organization of it, but the fundraising for it and the sponsorships all along the way. All the planning that went into it, all the hundreds and hundreds of people that were involved, thousands of people, to put on a parade that would warm the hearts of all the citizens. That's a Kim House philosophy, to be very inclusive, that this community belongs to all the people that live here. Such a great job getting the thing organized. Well, it's just so thrilling to see it all come together because we have worried, haven't we, Kim? I haven't worried a bit. I have worried. I have worried. There's a little, a little liquid sunshine. Don't you know it? Uh, the, the mummers <laughs> still going to go or what? They're here. To walk down that parade route with the teeming crowds on both sides of the streets, what a payoff. Wow! That day, it was very exciting. It was exciting, especially when you stood and watched it, as we did on the grandstand down the street, and saw all the inclusion. It was Northampton. It was the uh, DAR with their float, the different church groups, Fox School, and it was the gay community and the peace group. It was all of Northampton, but it was all accepted by the people that were watching. Right now, we're in the midst of a United Way campaign, and I'm on about every committee there is to be a member of. And these are difficult times right now. We all really believe in what we're doing, which is, which is a great thing, you know? And sometimes we forget that other people have not yet been convinced. Now, this is probably year five I've tried on some of these right. folks to move, move them off the mark. Right. They're not moving. What you're trying to really do here, and I think everybody has to do it in their own style, is, you know, asking somebody to be charitable. Let's let go. Me, let me ask a simple question. What is a suggested statement for someone who hasn't given at all, or we have no record of them having given in the past? That's a big question. In some cases, it's just simply that uh, people in our neighborhood who have, uh, who have the resources, we feel that maybe we want to ask them to give back, give them the opportunity to give back, and this is the way that we know of. I have some concerns about standards of responsibility for the community and that we don't lose this feeling of participation and ownership and need to contribute. Yeah, but these are people who should have been given, giving, but haven't given. Well, how do we reach them? That's the point. Mm -hmm. The guy with the biggest house in town is right here. Right. And he should be ashamed of himself. 
I wish that everyone could have the feeling of satisfaction for having helped and created and put a little of themselves in the community. a parent, a loving parent at a young age, I realize how important love is in a child's life. Yeah, you're silly. I'm silly? I'm not silly, I'm Santa Claus. Okay, let's see if there are some presents here. What a feeling it is to to help someone and have them say thank you. Or they don't even have to say thank you, you just see the joy in their lives. My destiny, you're such a pretty girl. You're welcome, I love you. Here you go. It isn't a, something you have to do, it's something that you want to do because it brings you all together. Gee, I could get a little teary about all of this. <laughs> Obviously, it must have been passed down to me from my dad and my mother from family tradition. You're a beautiful little girl. I wish that we could translate that joy oh, I love you. to folks. Oh. It's the joy of giving that is so oh. powerful. This has been brought to you by Northampton's Living History Community Heritage Project. In the future, we hope to bring you portraits of the following and more. Thanks for watching. Sojourner's House is next. It's from here in 1850 that she launches her national career. She was a local speaker, but here she picked up the abolitionist theme and the women's rights theme and, uh, you know, could do it like no one else. Welcome to Northampton celebration and dedication. What I'm going to do now is make sure that our young people hear us carefully because what we're about to do will be recognized for a couple of generations. This is really very overwhelming. We want to thank the community for the countless ways you were involved in and supported the long process of erecting the statue to Sojourner Truth. Sojourner's vision and strength and wisdom and faith inspired us all to create this memorial statue. But the story of how we all did it, all of you over the last nine years, is also an inspiring story. The important message that I'm to convey is that this community built this statue, that we did it.
Oh, what a fancy. Up here. They too small up here? Yeah. I wonder if I could have them stretched. Oh. Well, can you wait a few minutes? I stretch for you. You can do anything, can't you? Sometime. I didn't fix those shoes for a while. See that, try it. Finally, I find the right way because of Sit down over here. I don't want you to fall. That feels good. Well, see? I don't want to stretch too much because you'll be complaining. They fall on your feet. My. Holy smokes. <laughs> go, 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 go. I call him adopted son. Thank you. What I'll do without you. A lot of things. <laughs> A lot of people ask me, this is your son? No, I says I adopt him. <laughs> Excuse me, let me. Don't take my job away. Somebody here? Oh, sauerkraut. I promised sauerkraut, I promised it. Danke. You're most welcome. Okay, you got shoes. I see this man walking. He come very slow <laughs> to the car. Ah, who are you? To me. Wise guy. How much you trust for that souls and nails? <laughs> I used to do this. Right away? I knew it. You know? When he said, I used to do this. Right away, I knew it. All right. You want to do it again? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know. I'm too old. I don't know if I can do it again. Of course you can do it. What do you mean, too old? Never too old for nothing. This the key, was the key of the door, right? I took the key, I gave him the key, and I told him, this is yours. Tomorrow morning, if you feel you got the key, you open the door. When next day, when I came over, he was already there. Since then, I never opened the door. He opens the door all the time. <laughs> not argue anymore okay because you know the point is I'm gonna tell you what to do and then you you're gonna pay it see, because we, we're, we're not on the same line all the time so but the point is I can't excuse it the judge is the only one that's gonna say you've done enough you did enough to, to cause you not to go to jail okay judge, I've got one off of judge Wilson's list that Atkins drew is ready to yep. be heard would you like to hear it Okay. She wants to know if she can file an emergency modification. Okay. Just with give me that information, I have to tell you, you have to talk to one of the assistant registers. I can bring you up the other end and then you can... Okay. We may or may not settle it. We may or may not come up with some agreements. Custody hopefully will come off the table so that we can all limit the amount of time that we're spending. Visitation should come off the table. Holiday schedule come off the table. And you're down to money. Money is what breaks marriages, and money what causes, you know, divorce trials to happen. Well, right, because 50-50 doesn't work if we have custody, because then we're only getting her every other weekend, and that's not good enough. I understand. Okay. All right. Well, there are many issues that divorcing couples need to talk about. Basically, here are the issues. Children. Real estate. Do you own any real estate mm -hmm. together? You need to... Yeah, I was going to give her the house. You don't want it. Separate, and then... If I brought the pictures today, you'd take one look at yeah. what it looked like and what it looks like now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wanted well, after you, after I left my child with you, and you let her okay, throw bocce right. balls yeah. through the ceiling. Listen, right. listen, listen, okay. listen. I don't think this is helpful. Sometimes you'll be able to get along better, and sometimes you will be able to hardly speak to each other. It looks like you folks are here for a hearing on your divorce this morning. I'm going to ask you to stand and raise your right hand so we can swear you in, please. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you, God. I do. I do. You've signed this agreement. Have you done that voluntarily? Yes, yes. Was there any pressure on either one of you from any source to sign this agreement? No. No. 
Have you read it? Yes. Yes. Do you understand it? Yes. Are the provisions in this agreement provisions you can accept and live with for the future? Yes. Is there any request for a change of name? No. No? Okay. Anything further from either one of you? Okay. Do you both believe that the marriage remains irretrievably broken down as of today? Yes, they are. Yes. 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 Based on what you've told me and the changes that you've made in the agreement, I will grant the divorce for irretrievable breakdown and I will approve your agreement. Mm -hmm.